So dear students, welcome you all to our to the discussion on project management. Today we are going to cover McKinsey 7S framework. And you know that uh, we are following one text that is known as project management and managerial approach uh, written by Jack R. Meredith and Samuel J. Mantle Jr. And we have covered uh, the first portion of this discussion. Uh, I'm Dr. Tanvir Mohammad Haidarari, who is going to present today's uh, McKinsey 7S framework. Since we have covered uh, other parts earlier, so we are uh, going to discuss 7S frameworks a straight way. Uh, what is McKinsey 7S framework in project management? What it is? Uh, we know that it is developed by McKinsey and company uh, in the early 1980s. And the developer's uh, name uh, is Tom Peters and Robert Waterman. Uh, they are two consultants. McKinsey uh, and company is also a consulting firm. And uh, Tom Peters and Robert Waterman, they both are consultant of McKinsey and company. And what is the basic uh, premise of the model? Uh, the basic uh, premise of the model is that there are seven internal aspects of an organization that need to be united if it is to be successful. And these seven uh, frameworks uh, are really works if one can evaluate properly these seven uh, as frameworks to start a project or to expand a project or to renew a project or to take investment decision or to take expansion decision. Uh, whatever the goal or objectives, uh, if one can use properly McKinsey 7S framework, it works. So uh, how McKinsey 7 works is that much useful or how can we say that this is really important? Obviously it has some advantages. And what are the advantages? The 7S frameworks helps you to improve the performance of a project then it helps to examine the likely effects of future changes with the project because 7S frameworks uh, always find out the gap between uh, where we are, where our company is now and where we want to reach in the future. So it helps to find out the gap and then it suggests that what should be the right action plan or a strategies to reach to the destination or where we want to reach. Uh, so that's why it says that it uh, these McKinsey 7S framework help us to examine the likely effects of future changes within a project. Moreover, it helps us to align departments and processes during a merger and acquisition. So whenever there is always a restructuring of your capital and management, the changes of debt and equity, changes of management structures, uh, uh, these McKinsey 7S frameworks will pinpoint where you need to change where you need to add, where you need to subtract, because these seven S uh, are really guide us that what to do. And then it will help us to determine how best to implement a proposed strategy. Now, what are these seven S? We are talking about seven S again and again. So what are this? Uh, so what are these seven S? that we are again and again talking about McKinsey 7S framework. Uh, these seven A's are divided into two elements. One is called hard elements. Another one is called soft elements. Hard elements, when, when we talk about hard elements, uh, it's easier to identify, easier to analyze, and easier to evaluate. So hard elements are those parts of McKinsey's 7S framework, these are easily identifiable, easily uh, 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 changeable. But soft elements are not that much easy to identify and analyze. So remember, soft elements. But these all seven elements are the internal elements of an organization, means you have all the control in your hand. When you studied environmental analysis, you know that we have internal environment and external environment. So when we go for external environment analysis, 
uh, we can't control all those elements of external environment analysis like political factors, economic factors, social factors, law and order, technological factors. But when we are talking about internal environment analysis, all these are within our organization. So we have full control of all these elements. So these 7S framework, McKinsey's 7S framework, uh, we have 7S, which are internal elements of an organization related to internal environment analysis of an organization. So we have all the control in our hand. If you want, we can control this. A little discussion we need. Basically, what are these? So at least we need to understand what are these. So if we want to uh, analyze what are these, I can start with uh, strategy. So remember, wherever you find the word strategy, you can say strategy is a strategy of a project, a strategy of a company is its action plan, action plan. So strategies are basically action plan, but not action, not all action plan. What kind of action plan we are talking about? A company or a, or a project, a strategy is its action plan for outperforming competitors to achieve superior profitability. So explain this. A strategy is action plan. Action plan for what? For outperforming competitors. We want to go ahead. We want to go ahead. We don't want to see that uh, our competitors can do better than us. So that's why it says a strategy means a company's action plan for outperforming competitors and to achieve superior profitability. And then structure what kind of a structure you need to follow for your project for your organization it depends on how large your company is or how small your company is we know about various management structure like simple structure functional structure divisional structure matrix structure a holding company structure you have studied all these types of structure under course management so you have to decide that what kind of a structure really match with your organization. Once the structure is all right, additional subtraction is done. You have a very good suitable structure to operate your project, to run your project. Same time, you need system. You know that nowadays we are using technology. We are data driven. We are technology driven. Uh, so that case is, systems should be that much intelligent and sophisticated where the people can interact with each other, people can move uh, outcome based and results can be achieved through teamwork. So system should be democratic, system should be a uh, laissez fair where everybody can participate in decision making and can reach to a, a very good uh, decision. What are the soft elements? One is shared values. You know that we say this company has a corporate culture. This company's culture is good. This company's culture is not good. It means the company or the project has some shared values that differentiate between one company to another company. Some companies shared values are like this. They practice very good culture. They have very good etiquette and manner. They have very good time management. They, uh, they, they are, their employees are enthusiastic. They respect each other and they are goal driven. They're result driven. They're outcome based. So there are some shared values that is really making your organization ahead than others. Your skills, you know that the skills means the abilities and capabilities of the employees that really lead an organization to its destination. Now you need to evaluate that what knowledge and skills you have in your project, what knowledge and skills you need to reach to your destination to achieve your vision. So find out the gap and then find out whether training, coaching is enough to acquire new skills or you need to recruit new employees, new staff. 
So you see that you need to evaluate these skills to find out your level of the staff, that whether you need new staff or not, or existing staffs are enough, what are their uh, abilities? And a style is the way that a staff can act to achieve goal and objectives. So these way, if you make a plan related to McKinsey's 7S framework, no doubt these will give you a very good result. We can check textual explanation of hard and soft because I have already explained that what are the hard elements and what are the soft elements. Now I'm going to check the textual explanation of hard and soft. Hard elements are easier to define or identify and management can directly influence them. What I have already mentioned that you can directly influence them, you can change, you can add, you can, you can subtract. And what are these? Already explained. That is your strategy statements, organization charts and reporting lines and formal processes and IT systems. So what are the soft elements? On the other hand, can be more difficult to describe and are less tangible and more influenced by culture. So you see that the key difference is hard elements are easier to define or identify, but soft elements on the other hand, it's really difficult to uh, identify, define or describe. So you must be keen enough when you analyze your soft elements. And what are the soft elements? The shared values, the skills, style, and stuff. Uh, it looks like this. Why there are so many lines? It says these all elements are equally important. You can't say one is more important than another. And it shows that the connections are showing that you need to emphasize all elements equally because they all are interrelated and interconnected. So if you put your devotion, your analysis, uh, your, 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 your strategies on all these elements equally, that will really help to reach to the destination. Now a little textual presentation again of all the seven S. If you forget, just you can check this. So let's look at each of the elements specifically, though we have already explained once. Now, just the uh, 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 textual presentation. So I have already explained in another way, a strategy means a company's action plan that helps to outperform competitors to achieve superior profitability. And here we can say a strategy is the plan devised to maintain and build competitive advantage over the competition. You see that competitive advantage over the competition. And I said outperforming competitors, the meaning is same. The structure, the way the organization is structured and who reports to whom. I have already used all the examples of structures that you have learned from another course known as management. So there are simple structure, you know, that if your project is very simple, uh, 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 decision-making is centralized, that case a simple structure is fine. If it's more, bigger than uh, simple, bigger than sole proprietorship, then you can go for functional structure. If you have operation all over the country, divisional is better. And if you have more than one reporting agencies, that cages matrix is better. So these way you must remember all the structures you have learned from your other courses. System, yes, you must have system to operate your activities, to operate your business, to run a project. You must know that what you have to do, what time you, you have to open your office and what time you have to close. And all the responsible person, they must know that what are their duties and responsibilities. These all are under system. The daily activities and procedures that staff members engage in to get the job done. What's the share value? Is called super. It's called superordinate goals. Superordinate goals means it. It really says that your organization is different than others. It says your organization is uh, uh, better than others. So shared values are making 
differences between two organization. So th these are the core values of the company. We have some core values. Protect a manusher kichu core value at Protect organization or share kichu core values at So these are the core values of the company that are evidenced in the corporate culture and the general work ethic. So you can say this organization is practicing corporate culture. What does it mean? It means they have some values. Uh, they start on time and they finish their work on time. Uh, these kind of uh, values they may have. And a style, it's, it's related to leadership. It's related to decision-making, whether your organization is autocratic uh, types of uh, uh, leadership uh, practicing or it's democratic or it's laissez fair uh, where most of the employees can participate in decision making. Most of the decisions are taken by the employees and fews are by the uh, project directors or managers or owners uh, if it is laissez fair. If it is democratic, both has equal role to take decision. If it's autocratic, only project manager, project director, project owners uh, uh, are the decision maker. Staff, very simple, we know that it means the employees and their capabilities, their abilities to perform a task. And the skills is also the uh, uh, competency uh, of the employees uh, that really help the organization to achieve organization goals and objectives. Now you can consider any example, you can consider a project in front of you or, or you can, uh, uh, you can consider uh, the activities of an organization that familiar to you and use McKinsey 7S framework to find out where they are, what they want to reach, and then suggest them what should be the measures they have to take in about 7S, like a strategy, structure, system, shared values, style, staff, and skills that will help the organization to reach to its destination. And this is uh, a guideline from McKinsey and company, company uh, regarding uh, your uh, application uh, of uh, projects, implications of projects, or making a project successful.